So you need to factory reset your TP-Link Jetstream switch. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And in this particular video, this is mostly catered towards the Jetstream switches that are in the Amato lineup. This may work on other Jetstream switches, some of the older ones, I'm not sure. But so far, all of the Jetstream switches that I've done this on uh, are in the Amato group and the method is the same. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I like to do that. Now, most of the Jetstream switches come with a serial port on the front as well as a micro USB port. Today, I'm gonna to be using a USB to micro USB port to interface with the COM port on the switch so we can do the factory reset or reset the switch, whatever you wanna call it. So first things first, I like to have my switch powered on so that way I can more easily identify the COM port that I will be needing in Windows. Uh, that is very important. And we will also be using PuTTY to do this. Uh, PuTTY is an application that you can download online for free. It's worked great for many years and it can pretty much do all of this kind of stuff very well and easily on many different versions of Windows. I will be using Windows 11 today, by the way. So first things first, I'm gonna take my USB port, plug it into my Windows 11 laptop and plug into the front USB port. Now we should hear a notification sound from Windows letting me know that it is in fact uh, discovered a new device. And in order to find the COM port, we're going to open Device Manager. So I hit the Windows key and I started typing Device Manager and we're looking for this application here. If we open this up, we get a huge laundry list of devices that our Windows laptop knows about or our Windows operating system knows about. And down here, we'll see ports. We see COM and LPT. So if we expand this, we'll see that there are two COM ports currently. There is COM3 and COM4. Well, how do we know which one to use? Very simple. Let's just unplug our COM port from the switch or laptop. Either way is fine. And COM4 has disappeared. So now we know we need to use COM4. So let's go ahead and just turn off our TP-Link switch by unplugging it. Uh, as far as I am aware that you have to unplug all of them. Uh, there is no reset button on any of these switches. That's probably why you're here. Now let's go ahead and open up PuTTY. So hitting the Windows key, I am able to search for PuTTY. The application pops right up. And there's a couple things we need to configure in PuTTY first before we can begin this process. Down here in the left pane, if we'll find a uh, connection setting for serial. We're going to click on that. From here, we're going to want to change the serial line to connect to COM port 4 because that's what we identified earlier in Device Manager. We need to change the baud rate to 38400. This is actually very important and it matters uh, for this particular instance. I have done this on multiple switches. So far, they all do require that baud rate of 3800. 38,400, wow. And uh, parity, we're gonna set to none, and we're also gonna set flow control to none as well. We're not gonna touch data bits or stop bits. Now, if we go back here in the top left and click on session, and now hit the radio button here for serial, this should go ahead and update our um, settings, I suppose. And we're gonna wanna go ahead and give it a name. So let's call it Jetstream. So that way we can save this profile and use it again in the future should we need to. And we don't have to remember how to configure all of that stuff. So if I hit load here, uh, that will load the profile. If I go back to default settings and load that, uh, you can see that I've lost all my settings and they've gone back to default. And of course, you know, if I load the profile we just created, it loads all of that stuff again for us. Okay, so now that we're at this point, we're gonna have to move fairly quickly. Now we're gonna be listening for a chime from Windows, and we're also gonna be looking in Device Manager for when the COM port uh, appears. And once it appears, we're pretty much wanna start mashing that open button so we can get into the switch before the Linux kernel loads. It's very important that we get into it before the Linux kernel loads because then we'll have to restart the process as in unpowering it and powering it back on. So let's go ahead and connect our micro USB port to the switch, if I can find it. All right, we're in. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in the switch and listen for that chime.
There it is. So let's quickly open and press any key to basically prevent the switch from loading into uh, the Linux kernel, which we did. So you notice there was a three second countdown timer. So you've got to be quick because you will miss it. And now this is the easy part. Oh, and by the way, if you do miss it, that's fine. Just unplug the switch and plug it back in. And hopefully you can beat the timer or the countdown timer to actually get to this menu. So what we're going to want to do from here is we have some options in this boot menu. And the one that we're particularly looking for is option two or the one that says reset. So if I hit two and press enter on the keyboard, it's going to ask me if I'm sure if I want to reset my device. Of course, we're sure that's why we're here. And now we just sit back and relax and let the switch do its thing. So our connection to putty has should be closed or not to putty. Our connection to the COM port and putty should be closed and the switch is going to be resetting. And basically from here, once you have it reset, you can get logged back into the admin page or get your Jetstream switch adopted into the Amada controller software from this point uh, because it's all factory settings. And that is how you factory reset a TP-Link Jetstream switch. Pretty simple, right? Hopefully I didn't uh, screw you guys over too much. And with all that being said, I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching and I will see you all next time. Peace.